Hello and welcome to On The Wrist. Today we're going to do a State of the Collection update for November 2024. There were some moderate shakeups in my collection this year with some great new additions and some wonderful pieces leaving my collection. Keep in mind while you watch this, my wrist size is 7.5 inches and there'll be links to all the video reviews of these watches down in the description. Let's start off by going over the watches that left my collection this year. The first one that left my collection is the Pagani Design PD1690, the Tiffany Blue Dial Oyster Perpetual. This along with my Seiko Pro Specs were two watches I got rid of to consolidate my collection and add some funds for a larger watch purchase. Another major change was I got rid of my Tudor Black Bay 58. This one was a really hard decision, but there was a watch I wanted much more than that, so in order to fund that purchase, I decided it was time to get rid of the Black Bay. While I love the look of the Black Bay, I have decided it's a little small for my wrist size, and I wanted something a little larger. Now, let's turn over to the current collection. So first off, we have my DIY Watch Club Moselle Dress Watch. This is a watch friends gave me as a wedding gift. I had a ton of fun doing the kit. It's something that'll always stay in my collection, it doesn't get a ton of wrist time, but and it's associated with fond memories of my friends and the fun experience of doing the kit. Next up, we got the Casio GA2100 1A1, the original stealth mode version. This is before they started doing all the Bluetooth variants, and I've had this now for about four or five years. This watch is rock solid as a G-Shock. It's got awesome style. It was only about 100 bucks, and it's my active wear watch. So if we're going snowboarding, doing anything on a mountain bike, anything rough and tough, this is the watch I'm wearing. Great style, tons of fun, and for $100, really hard to beat. On the wrist, it just looks so good. It's got that Cassie Oak style, as the nickname dictates. Plenty of space on the strap for bigger or smaller wrists, and just an awesome wrist presence and low profile. Next up is my Seiko Presage Cocktail Time SSA346. This is a watch I've had for quite a few years. It was my first real big watch purchase when I first got into watches. One of my best friends actually has the blue version of this watch that was at one point mine. So I quite enjoy us both having one of each of these colored watches. This watch has been a really fun dress watch. I love the almost coppery rose gold color on the outside, the beautiful sunburst dial, the power reserve indicator was something that I was really interested in when I first picked up this watch. And it's been a very comfortable, very great staple of my collection, and I don't see it leaving anytime soon. Next up, we got the Pagani Design PD1767, which is clearly a Panerai submersible homage. This watch has an exhibition back Chinese movement, and I put on this cool red digital camo strap. And Pagani Design specializes in low cost homages, but it has a mechanical movement, ton of style, and this watch does have a few imperfections. There's a section of the case without finishing, and there's some other minor details that aren't perfect, but for costing around 100 US dollars, he can't complain too much. Next up, we got my Oris Big Crown Porter Date 80th Anniversary Edition bronze case with the green dial. This is what I consider my first luxury watch that I purchased. I absolutely love how it looks. The case is patinaed so nicely and paired with the green dial and the brown strap, it is my favorite fall and spring watch. This watch has an exhibition back and just look at that coin edge bezel. On the wrist, the 40 millimeter diameter is perfect for my seven and a half inch wrist size. It also has very long lugs, so it has a little more wrist presence than most 40 millimeters. Thin profile, great style, a really fun piece of my collection and my only bronze watch. Next up is my Omega Speedmaster Professional. This is one of my absolute favorites and gets the most wrist time out of any watch I have. It's an absolute classic stylistically. It just goes so well with everything. And here I have it on this awesome gray ostrich leather strap that my wife got me for Christmas. This watch is also a strap monster where it's looks beautiful on the bracelet or really any other color strap option. This watch is my most commonly worn watch and I expect to keep it in my collection indefinitely. The first new addition to the collection we have this year is this Pagani Design PD1662. This is of course an homage after the Rolex GMT2 Master, also known as the Batgirl because it's the Jubilee bracelet. Like all Pagani Design, this was around 100 US dollars has an automatic movement, sapphire crystal, and actually has a ceramic bezel. This watch is beautiful on the style, feels really good and high quality for the cost. It's something I bought ahead of going on a trip because I wanted something that I wasn't concerned about that had still had a ton of style, and this did not disappoint. 
Because you can buy these on Amazon, eBay, or AliExpress, they're very accessible, very easy way to get a ton of style and a bunch of fun options. Beautiful on their wrist, perfectly proportioned for my seven and a half inch wrist. And this watch has been a ton of fun to wear. A link to a full review of this watch will pop up on the screen. And last but not least, the major addition to my collection this year, the Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT SBGE 305 Limited Edition. This watch has everything I was looking for. A GMT, a spring drive movement, a red dial, and just such amazing style. I had planned to do a review of this with my local jewelry store. However, after I got my hands on it, I couldn't put it down. So I ended up purchasing it immediately afterwards. I love the spring drive movement. The GMT function is something I've always wanted. And just the red dial is not something you see done very well very often, but Grand Seiko has a way of doing it that is just superb. This dial looks amazing in so many different lights. It's something that I've really looked forward to. And I actually been looking at it online since it was announced back in February from when I purchased it in June. I had been scoping out and planning purchasing a watch like this since last year, but it wasn't until I got my hands on this that I knew that this was the one to get. As part of my plan to try and keep the number of watches in my collection reasonable, I did trade in the Tudor Black Bay towards this. I have been thoroughly, thoroughly pleased with this, and Grand Seiko does not disappoint. And this has challenged a Speedmaster for most wrist time ever since I've gotten it. So plans for next year? I'm very hopeful that next year I'll be able to get another watch of the Grand Seiko, Oris, or Omega Caliber. One of my hopes would be a Panerai. There are a couple of different Panerais that are poking out that I really enjoy. Also would love to pick up an IWC Portuguese at some point, but those are pretty big items. So hopeful that maybe I'll be able to do one next year. If not, I have a wonderful collection that I have something I want to wear every single day that's really diverse, that I really enjoy. But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on my collection, which watches you like, which ones you don't, or any suggestions you'd have for different watches that you think belong in this collection. That's all for me today. This has been On The Wrist. Thank you for watching.